Did you know that there are five different ways to record a drum beat in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down all five and show you how to get some cool drum beats in your tracks. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. Now, drums are the backbone of a lot of different styles of music, and there's a heap of different ways to create drums in GarageBand. So what I'm doing in this one is breaking down all five ways that we can create drums. And if you watch to the end, I'm going to give you a bonus way to create some very cool and unique drum sounds. So let's dive in to GarageBand now and take a look. We're here in GarageBand on the iPad. There's a few small differences with the iPhone, which I'll point out as we go along. But let's jump into the first way to record drums, and that is using the drums. So here we are. We've navigated to the drums icon here. We're going to tap on the big dr drum picture there. And now we can hit the actual drums and create a drum sound. Now to record these drums in, we simply hit the record button and then start playing drums. And then hit the play button again. That's going to pause our recording. We can now tap the track view icon in the top left here. And here is our recording. If we want to play it back, we hit play. And we're good to go. Now, there's a few options once you've recorded your drums, which we can get to by tapping on the little mixer icon here up the top. Now, on your iPhone, it may be in your top right corner and then under your track settings. And if we tap on track settings right up the top here, we've got quantization and recording options. Let's look at quantization first. Quantization helps line up our performance on the grid. And as usual, there's a heap of videos all about quantization, which will be linked in the description. So we can choose what sort of quantization we want if our performance isn't exactly right. We can then go to our recording option here and we can turn merge recordings on or off. Now merge recordings means if we add another layer of drums, it's going to record over the top. If we have that off, it will replace our original drums if we record that. And once again, video in the description if you want to learn about that. Multi-take recording, same sort of deal. We can record multiple takes and then choose which of those takes we want. And once again, there's another video in the description if you want to learn more about multi-take recording. But that is the simplest way to record in some drums. We come into our drum instrument here, we play some drums, we record it, and then we've got those drums recorded into and ready to use for our track. Now, before we move on to the second method, I'm going to give you one part B, because if we tap add here, we can also add in an electronic drum kit. If we tap on the more sounds here and we choose one of these other kits that has a drum machine logo, then we can actually tap and use an electronic drum kit. So these differ in a few ways. You'll see there's some control knobs along the top there. If they're not visible and you're on an iPhone, you'll need to tap the little settings button in the top right corner and that'll drop those down and you can actually change them. So we can record in the same way. Let's just do that now. Hit record and... All right, and what we should have done is muted out our original drums there before we recorded. But now we've recorded in these electronic drums like this. And let's just show you a couple of quick drum editing tricks here. So what we can actually do is we can tap here, tap again, and go to edit. And then we're here in our drum MIDI editor. So from here, we can actually move a beat by tapping and holding and dragging it across like that. We can actually change the kit piece that's used by dragging up and down. And then we can tap on each of these and change the velocity from high to low. So we've got some cool options there that we can actually change. Now we can also change some of the other settings by going into our settings function. We'll tap on drums, we'll tap again, we'll go settings. And in here, we can change the overall velocity here, which doesn't make a lot of difference because if you've already got a maximum velocity, it won't turn it up anymore. But we can turn looping on, which you can see in the background there has looped out that one. We can access our quantization in here instead of going into the other spot. And we can increase our speed by two to four times or make it a quarter or a half the original speed. And finally, we can reverse our whole pattern, which will give us some sort of interesting effects. And by interesting, I mean usually pretty bad. But there's some additional tips for using the real drums here, whether they're acoustic or electronic in GarageBand.
So let's move on to the actual second method we have here. We're going to tap the plus button, and this time, instead of just tapping drums, we're going to tap on smart drums. Now, smart drums have been around for a while. They've been superseded by some of the other methods, but they're still pretty cool. Now, we've got our hip-hop drum machine loaded here. We can tap on that one here and change those. If you're on an iPhone, you'll tap in the top left with the drop-down arrow, tap on the type of drum you have, and change it there. But what we can do here with the smart drums is that we can actually add in our kit pieces. So let's grab our kick and drag it. We can decide whether we want it to be loud or quiet, simple or complex. So let's just make this loud in the middle here. And it's going to start playing that. And then we can grab a snare. And they're starting to play along. To turn off the drum machine, we tap over here on the left if you don't want to hear it while you're setting up your beat. So let's just add in a couple more here. Hi-hats and a shaker. We'll just turn that off for the time being. So we can actually add in any of these different kit pieces. Now you're restricted to only a few kit pieces as you can see here, but it's still a pretty good option here. We can actually go in and record this now by tapping on the record button. And what it will do is it will record that pattern that we've just created. If we hit the stop button there now, then we can come back out here to our track view and there it is. It's recorded it in just like it does with our other drums and now we can do those same editing tips and tools as we did before. But let's jump back in here because there's a couple of other things I want to show you about smart drums here. We can actually randomize the pattern by rolling the dice in the bottom left here. And you can get some interesting patterns there with that big 808 beat there. And as I mentioned before, we can use that preview button there to turn that on and off. We can use the reset button, which will reset everything back to what we had before if we've made a change, so we've moved things around, and then we can reset it back. And we can actually add a different smart drums part at the second spot here. If we came in here and we dial in a different sound and now hit record, And we can actually layer up different sounds here. So we go back to our track view in here. You can see that it transitions between one drum beat into another drum beat. So we can record multiple drum beats just by stopping and starting, changing up our smart drums and re-recording. So there you go. The smart drums are another cool way to add a beat here in GarageBand. Moving on to method number three, and that is to use our beat sequencers. So again, we're going to tap the plus button and down the bottom of drums here, this time we're going to tap on beat sequencer. And here we have the very cool step sequencer built right here into GarageBand. Now we can change our drum kit in the bottom left here. Let's change it from the modern 808. Let's grab one of our acoustic kits, in fact. Let's use our four on the floor. We'll tap that and we'll hit done. And it's going to start playing a default pattern here. We can turn it off by tapping at the bottom there, and we can actually turn that one on. Now, the step sequencer is so powerful, and I've got another video that has all of the different features that you can check out if you want to learn all about using the step sequencer, but here's a few tips to get you started. So what we can actually do is we can tap here to add or remove different kit pieces and different steps, and then when we play back using the button down the bottom here, we can start creating some really custom grooves. Now to record, we use the same method as we have in the others. We just tap the record button at the top here. It'll count us in, and then it will start recording that beat that we've actually recorded and set up. So we'll hit the pause button there, and just like our other drums, we can come back to the track view here, and we can actually view it as its ordinary MIDI data here. So we can edit it, we can adjust it, we can do all the settings that we did before. Let's jump back in here, because there's a couple more things I want to show you about this. We can actually add a new kit piece. If you scroll down to the bottom, which you need to scroll by touching and dragging on the very left here on all of these pieces, otherwise you're going to do that, you can actually tap the plus button here and add in an additional kit piece. So Say we wanted this ride bell in here, we can tap that, and now we're going to have our ride bell that we can add in. Let's just fix that up or it's going to sound crazy, and let's take a listen to it now with our ride bell. So that's pretty cool. We can actually add in additional kit pieces there. Now, if we're not happy with this pattern, we can roll the dice again, hit the randomize button in the bottom left here, this little dice icon, and we get a random pattern. Let's take a listen. Yeah, maybe not. Or we can go to our pattern browser. So next to four on the floor here is our pattern browser. And we can scroll through here. And let's just say we wanted something more like the uh, sticks and stones. We can dial in a very simple pattern like that turn it off again, we're good to go. So there you go, the beat sequencer, a very cool way to add in a beat here in GarageBand. Had enough? 
Neither have I. Let's look at number four, which is our drummer. Now, this is probably my favorite way to add drums. We're going to hit the plus button again. This time, we're going to scroll across from drums because we need to find our drummer and we can tap on our drummer. And here we go. We're in a completely different interface here. Now, this is similar to smart drums, but it's like powerful smart drums. So what we can do, we've still got our loud, soft, simple, complex slider here, but now we can decide what kit pieces we're using, whether we're on the cymbals, the toms, or the hi-hat, whether we have have a kick drum at all or a snare at all here how many fills that we're going to have in here we can slide that up and down and we can change the different patterns that are used by our different drummers we can even change our drummer if we don't like kyle we tap on kyle's vacant face here and we could add in my favorite anders and now anders will be on the drums and there's a heap of different drummers on both acoustic and electronic as usual i've got a more comprehensive video all about drummer which will be linked up the top and down in the description that you can check out but let's now go through through some of the fundamental features to get you started with drummer. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is that unlike the other ones, we don't actually have to record. So we've already got our waveform pattern in here. If we hit play, then Anders starts blasting us with that big kick drum sound. We can then change to another preset. Say we want something like the crimson preset here. Then we can hit play again. And we get a completely different sound. Now, you'll notice here that we've got eight bars by default, but we can actually grab the handle here and drag this back if we wanted four bars there. And then we could say copy this and then line up here and just paste it in again. And this gives us great flexibility. We can actually go through and custom design. I've done three bars there. We can custom design exactly what we want to put in our drummer. We can add in different sections and we can do that. Now, unlike the other drums, if we go out to our track view here, we'll see we've got these yellow waveforms. So we can't actually edit these in other ways. If we tap on them and we go into like our settings, we do have some of those settings around velocity, looping and speed and reversing. But if we tap on our edit button, instead of going into our MIDI note editor, we come straight back here into drummer and we can then adjust things that are going on here by using these. So if we wanted to change this up, we wanted him to be a bit quieter and a bit simpler, we can do that. We'll go back to the start of the track. And suddenly Anders has taken a chill pill. So that is how we can use the drummer. You can dial in some drums here. You don't get the complete control you get with something like the beat sequencer or the manual drums. But if you want to lay down a cool, realistic sounding drum beat, drummer is the way to go. All right, method number five, and then we're going to take a look at that bonus method, which I can't wait to show you. It's super cool. So what we can do here is let's tap on the loops icon because now we're actually going to use some drum loops. So we don't need to actually add an instrument. We can go to loops and we've got our Apple loops here. Now we can tap on instruments and we can tap all drums and we're going to get all of our drum loops in here. So we can scroll down here and we can pick from any of these drum beats that we like. So whichever one we want, let's just grab the bar band basic drums it. We can tap it to preview. Yep, that sounds pretty cool. And if we tap and hold, we can drag it. And we, all we need to do is dump it onto a blank track. And there you go. It puts it in here. Now, this time, you'll notice, unlike the yellow and the green, we've got a blue track here, which is a wave file. So there's limited things we can do with this in terms of changing it around. But because it's an Apple Loop, it will beat match and it will do some cool things like that. And if you want to learn more about Apple Loops, not surprisingly, there's a video linked up the top there and down in the description. But let's take a look at what we can actually do with these loops. We can come in here and we can tap it. We can go to our settings and we've got all of those same settings, but this time we can adjust the gain here. We can adjust whether it's looping or not. So we can turn that on and off. Follow tempo and pitch is important to have on because if we turn that off, it won't actually follow the tempo and the pitch of our song. And once again, we've got our speed and our reverse control. So that's pretty cool. The other thing I want to show you here before we finish up with loops is if we tap the loop button here again, we can actually use these drummer loops. So we've got Anders here. Let's grab Anders intro. We'll tap and drag him in. And what these are, these are like a hybrid between the drummer and a loop. So you can actually just bring the drummer loops in here. And then if you play this now, 
it's just created a loop with Anders. And again, we can then come in here and do all of that customization that we could do before, but it's just a simpler way to access and use your drummer loops. So using loops is pretty cool. You can use your own drum loops. You can import drum loops. And again, videos about that down below, but the just using the Apple loops is a quick and easy way to get you up and running and get a drum beat using a drum loop. All right, time for the bonus method for creating a drum beat here in GarageBand. And this one I think is kind of cool. It's a little bit quirky, but let's jump in and take a look. We're going to tap on the plus button here. Now, instead of going to our drums or our drummer or our loops this time, we're going to go to our keyboard and we're going to tap on the sampler. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we're going to create our own custom drum kit. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can literally create the sounds yourself. I'm going to show you how we can do that. Or you can actually bring in some samples by importing them. So I'm going to first Firstly, show you how we do this by recording a sample. What I'm going to do is hit the big red start button and record a kick drum sound with my face and we'll see what this sounds like. <laughs> there you go. So we've got our kick drum. We'll just remove some of that noise and now a bit lower. Yeah, so I'm just using the iPad mic and I'm not really close enough to it, but you get the drift. So now if we want to record this. Let's hit the record button and record in some kick drum. There we go. We can go back to our track view now. And here it is. Here is our kick drum. And this is going to be my sample of me. And what I can do is I can tap this. I can go to edit. And we could edit this just like we would any other sound here. There they are. We can up the velocity if we want that to be a bit louder. And we can actually move the key to actually move the note up and down if we want it to be a little bit uh, higher sound. We can do that. And velocity up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a lot of options that we have here that we can do that. Now you can create your own hi-hats, you can create create your own uh, snares, you can create everything else. But the key to this is you need a separate sampler track for each sample. You can't have multiple samples triggered on one track. So if we wanted the second track here, we'd have to hit the plus button and then hit sampler again and then re-record our next sample. But this time I'm going to actually bring in something a bit more professional. Let's hit the import button in the top right here. And what we can now do is I've actually downloaded and imported a snare sample here. You can see it right there, right in the middle there, snare 100 BPM. If we tap on it, it'll play a preview. There's our snare. Whoop, it's playing it as a loop. If we want to bring it in, we just tap on the download button. And now we've brought in this sample, but you'll notice here that it's not really going to work for us because it's a whole bunch. But what we can do is we can drag the handle, put that right at the front and drag this one to the back. So it's just going to be a one shot sample. And we can bring this snare into our song. So this is going to be pretty cool. Uh, we'll turn the velocity down. That's going to be good. Now let's hit record and record some real snare to go with my fake kick drum. And we'll pause that there, come back to our drum kit here, uh, to our uh, track view, and here we go. We've got my own little drum kit there of Pete and his own snare. Let's play it back. And again, the quality you can get is a lot better when you're actually focused and you're trying to make a sound. You can adjust it, you can add effects, you can do cool things. So yes, you can not only bring in your own sounds by recording them with the sampler, you can import an actual sample. And I got this snare drum from Lander.com. Patrick Baird over at GarageBand Guide did a great video. I'll link that one up there right now and down in the description where you can actually download some free samples from Lander. All you need to do is sign up for a free account and you can download and import them into here. And if you need to learn how to do that, that, there's another video. There's going to be a long list of videos down the bottom there for you to check out if you want to learn more about how to do that. But there you go. There's your bonus tip. And here's the next cool thing is stay subscribed to the channel because coming up, I'm going to actually show you how to create a whole drum beat using all of these one shot samples that you can download and then how to merge them together and create your own cool drum loops using custom drum sounds. So stay tuned for that one. But for now, I'm exhausted because that's a lot of ways to get some drums. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. So there you go, five plus one ways to record drums here in GarageBand. If you'd like to learn more about drums in GarageBand, there's two videos linked down below. You can also subscribe by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon, and I'll see you on the next video.